Well, good morning and welcome back to City Line. As you saw on the wide shot, we got Miss Kat Shapiro in the house over there, kind of getting the wine warmed up so we can talk about it. But right now on the couch is somebody who I have been dying to have on the show. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming District 3 Council Member, Council Member Jamika Scott. Welcome to City Line. Thank you. Can we Appreciate roll it. a video that I think was a very important moment in Tacoma's history? Sure. Let's roll it. Right Here it is. And repeat after me. Okay. I state your name. I, Jamika Scott. Do you solemnly swear or affirm? Do you solemnly swear or affirm? That I will support the Constitution. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. Of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Washington. And the Constitution of the State of Washington. That I will comply with the City Charter. That I will comply with the City Charter. And all other ordinances of the City. And all other ordinances of the City. And that I will faithfully and impartially. And that I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge my, discharge the duties of the Office of Council Member District Number Three. <laughs> discharge the duties of the Office of Council Member District Number Three. According to the law and, seconds, and to the best of my ability. According to the law and the best of my ability. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> okay, that. Talk about a moment in time. <laughs> there it was. And there's so many questions I have about who swore you in, who was behind you, but I only have X amount of time, and you and I are going to have some real talk here. You grew up in Tacoma. I did. Um, what do you love about being a kid growing up in Tacoma? Uh, I feel like it was just, you know, I, I know a lot of people think back on Tacoma in the 90s and it's not their favorite time there's you know this idea that it was a really you know dangerous time here but um i just was grateful enough to grow up it, with neighbors and a family that was really tight-knit and uh looked out for each other and so it felt very free to you know have my little uh few square blocks that i could run around and ride my bike <laughs> without having to check in for a little bit and i could walk to school and just had some really great neighbors who were really all about like looking out for each other. So. I love, and you bring that, that, that's one of the things about you that I, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna just use me in this conversation as, uh, that I love about you is that you are homegrown. That you can say, I remember back in the 90s. That's part of that wealth of knowledge that you bring to this position. Before you were Jamaica Scott, District 3 council member, um, what was your path and background like? Because you were also an artist in addition to that wealth of being homegrown here. Yeah, uh, yeah I, so I graduated from college with a degree in creative writing. I originally went to school for elementary education. But, Jamaica! <laughs> um, I got a, little, a lot of tricks yeah, in my bag. Yeah, hello! Um, yeah, and so I, as much as I love working with youth and families, but I realized a couple of years into my elementary education major that me and 7 a.m., 8 a.m. class times. I know I'm here early this morning, no, but only for thank you. you. I, uh, <laughs> I was going to say preach. Yes, so, um, so I majored in creative writing with the focus in screenwriting, and then uh, outside, like after that, um, graduated into the recession of 2008, and so did a lot of just like youth and family work. I did mm -hmm. AmeriCorps. Um, I worked at the YWCA Pierce County. I was a nanny, a live-in nanny for a while. So look at you. Done a done a little bit of everything, a little chill of all trades. <laughs> and you were you were ruffling some feathers in in the <laughs> art community, and we happened to get wind of it. We have a video of when oh. you were on Art Town. Okay. Go ahead and roll that video. My name is Jamika Scott. My art is filmmaking and writing. Writing in particular is my passion. It kind of evolved into filmmaking, and so now that's kind of where it's at. We're in the hilltop in Tacoma. I chose this area because it's where I grew up. It's home. You know, Tacoma is home, but the hilltop, and particularly these few blocks within the area that I grew up in, that felt very much like my world. It just, it grounds me. It reminds me of the people who continually inspire me, who have inspired me in the past. 
It reminds me of those dreams I had, the ones that you harbor to yourself that you don't tell anybody about because you're too afraid to either fail at them or be told you can't. And so it just kind of reminds me of the promises I made to little Jamika. And I like to check in and make sure that I'm kind of keeping up with those or if I've adjusted them, that they're adjusted in a, in a way that makes sense. Oh my goodness, that little Jamika, she's <laughs> alive and well in there, isn't she? Yeah, she, uh, I don't know, you know, sometimes I think she wonders how we got ourselves into a position where we have to answer so many emails every day, but <laughs> <laughs> well, but other that, than that, she, I think she's pretty proud. That, that's where that creative writing comes yeah. in. <laughs> how many ways can you say, I hear you, I'm working on it, and I'll get back with you? With, and, within what's on right. my plate. And in the meantime, maybe, you know, check out 311. That's, That's a right. very good service That's that right. we have That's in our right. city. Yeah, there's, um, it's been very, yeah, it's been a, a, lot, a long time since that. That was since very, that, that was pre-pandemic, yeah. <laughs> that interview. So it feels, feels like a whole lifetime ago. Let's, let's talk about pre-pandemic for a minute. Um, you are, one of the things that I would assign to you is you are authentic, you are brave, and you stand in your truth. Um, when I think about um, your run as a council member, I think it was surprising for people that you had a lawsuit with the city, but you also were running as a city council. Is that part of that balance as a public versus personal public figure that you have to balance out of keeping those promises to little Jamaica that say, this is the neighborhood I grew up in. I'm standing in what I believe. Mm -hmm. And I also know how to make the big machine work. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, there are a lot of things that I would have rather be doing mm -hmm. um, than having to juggle the fact that you know, I'm, I am a representative of the city and um, I'm somebody who feels aggrieved by the city as well. So, um, you know, and I think that multiple things can be true at once. And Absolutely. that's kind of been a thing that I've been fighting for in a lot of my life. There are oftentimes I feel like when, you know, I, a lot of people kind of came to know me as um, a community organizer. You are. And so it, you know, I felt like because that was all they knew of me and that was how they formed their opinion, it was kind of putting me into a box and I just, I really don't like that. And so even with like kind of my resume of things, I tend to just go where things feel, like I try to always just take the next right step. And so, um, so yeah, so it's very, it can be very, um, isolating sometimes it can be very stifling sometimes like in these various spaces as somebody especially as somebody who's creative and I use art to express myself and to process the world um, it can just be really hard to only be seen as a politician or only be seen as an organizer um, and so because you're so much more than that yeah I, 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 at least I try to think I am <laughs> I think you are let's talk about this phrase creative economy mm -hmm. that you you carry with you what does it mean so we have the arts, um, and arts can make the artist money. Yes. Um, but art can also make a community money. It can make yes. a municipality money. It can, um, you know, and so, and art is not necessarily, in my mind, it's not always about the money of it, but um, that's kind of that shift I've had to do of, like, what does it mean to be an artist as a private citizen? Yes. And what does it mean to be a creative as somebody who is a policymaker. And that looks like how do we not only support the artists here who want to be able to live off of the creation that they're, you know, sharing as in with Tacoma the world. creates, exactly. yes. Exactly. Um, but also like we as a city, if we look into more creative ways um, of expressing ourselves, of branding ourselves, of telling our story, but also um, looking at the creative markets as a, something we can lean into. We have a lot of like, industrial space which right. would be nice for sound stages and things like that you know so we could be doing um, a lot of really cool stuff that we as the city could be um, reaping the benefits from essentially last five seconds yeah. where didn't that go quick what's did. the one thing you want to be remembered for in four years 
Um, you said standing in truth, but the the youth these days, Amanda, oh, <laughs> they say I standing love on the business. Youth. So um, I want people to remember me for being authentic and standing on business. <laughs> well, you are that, and Thank I want to have you back on this couch every ninety days, Miss Truth Teller. Let's do um, it. And I love it when I get to see you in the community. And thank you for your heart and for your resilience. Thank you for having me. We have much more to come on City Line. Don't go away. We'll be right back.